today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. I find it a little hard to believe that Donald Trump would hire somebody to shoot his ear and then... What up? It's your boy Trend Out Loud and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's Monday morning, feeling a little groggy. I'm sure like most of you are. It was a good weekend. I hope you guys had a good weekend. I definitely need to get home right after the show and get some sleep. I hope you all are feeling all right and recovering from the big weekend. All right. I got a good show for you set up. I got a good show set up for y'all today. I got um, three lead stories. Well, basically the lead story, as I'm sure most of you would have guessed, we're going to talk about the Donald Trump shooting or the Donald Trump uh, incident. Some people say it's not a shooting. Some people will say it was staged. We'll get into it. We're going to break it down. Um, And then after that lead story, we're going to jump into quick news. We're going to talk about um, actress Shannon Doherty. Then we're going to talk about Omari Hardwick, ghost from Power, the Power franchise. Uh, He's beefing with 50 Cent. Then we're going to talk about Richard Simmons. Then we're going to jump into question of the day. I got two questions of the day today. And then, of course, out, as always, we are going to close out with some sports news. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, your radios, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. Thomas Matthew Crooks identified as the gunman at Donald Trump's rally. All right. Donald Trump's rally shooter has been identified as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks. Images released by TMZ shows the shooter as a fairly young boy who wore glasses. According to CNN, he was shot and killed by Secret Service within seconds of firing into the Trump rally. Crooks was registered as a Republican, but once donated $15 to the Democratic Political Action Committee, according to TMZ. He graduated high school just two years ago. Before the shooting took place, took place secret service was made aware of the shooter as a as local authority as local authorities reported that he was outside the event acting suspicious an announcement was also made through law enforcement radio asking for officer asking for officers to keep an eye out for him the fbi is still attempting to determine the shooter's motives okay so um I think I also have a little bit of information about how he was treated as a kid. You guys know whenever there's a shooting unveiled um, and they're young, they go to their high school, they ask friends, whatever. And it's more times than not, it's always he was he or she was depressed or they were bullied and they try to find a reason for, um, you know, somebody doing something like that. So, um, all right, here we go. It says classmates of... Thomas Crooks revealed that he was bullied every day and described him as being as um, an outcast, like I just said. A classmate of Thomas Crooks, who has been identified as the shooter that shot Donald Trump during the Pennsylvania rally, was interviewed regarding his classmate's behavior and what could have led him to chose violence. The classmate of Crooks described him as an outcast and claimed that he was bullied often, Although the classmate is unclear whether or not this led to his recent decisions, he does feel sad about the reality of what has occurred. All right, I have a little clip of that interview. Take a look and we'll talk about it on the other side. He was bullied almost every day. In what way can you explain? I mean, he would sit alone at lunch. I mean, he was just an outcast. So like I said, it's it's like this anytime you hear of these kind of like mass um, shootings like this where you always hear like, you know, it's somebody just crying out for attention, somebody that has some sort of mental health disorder. Obviously, if you're shooting to a crowd of people, um, oftentimes it's also somebody who's just lacking attention, right? There's lacking attention. Um, you know, you're not, you're not, um, felt like you're seen. And now you go out in the blaze of glory and everybody knows your name. So it looks like that's what it is. Of course, of course, there's going to be a million different theories that, you know, this was the Democratic Party that put this kid up to it or he got paid off. Some people are going to say some a lot of people are saying that it's staged, um, you know, and then also to um, well, sorry, just they're saying that it's staged, saying that how Donald Trump, this is going to make him stronger. Um, I think Elon Musk I was reading a tweet where he said uh, Donald Trump is the toughest president since um, Theodore Roosevelt or something like that. But 
I find it a little hard to believe, just my take, my opinion. I find it a little hard to believe that Donald Trump would hire somebody to shoot his ear. And then also, they're saying that the the kid didn't actually even, the bullet didn't even shoot his ear. The kid shot the teleprompter and there was a piece of glass from the teleprompter that cut his ear. Then people are saying that there was not any blood until the Secret Service got there and they were like had fake blood and put it in his ear. So there's so many different, you know, backgrounds and stories of this. I for one don't think that this would be staged as crazy as Donald Trump can be sometimes to say that you're going to pay a sharpshooter off and let's just say the bullet hit him in his ear or grazed him. I understand that there's great shooters out there. I was even having this conversation at a party I was at on on Saturday and my cousin was like there's sharpshooters that could put a bullet you know, at the tip of a a nail and they have such precise accuracy or whatever, you're talking about your life. Like nobody is going to hire somebody to shoot them in their ear. Now, if you say, hey, I'm going to hire you, you shoot me in the leg or shoot me in the arm, fine. But that is way too close to your head. I don't believe that it, it was staged. That's now, that's if it was a bullet. If it is a piece of glass and maybe it was, hey, we're going to hire you to shoot at the teleprompter, you didn't even mean for the glass to ricochet and hit you, and now it was just an assassination attempt. That is a little bit more believable that they stage an assassination attempt, again, to rally up Donald Trump's crowd. They want to bring him down. He is this, and he is so great, whatever, blah, blah, and he's so strong. That I more believe. But if it comes out where we find out that a bullet hit his ear. There's no way to that stage. Just that's just my opinion. But um, you guys let me know what you think. Send me emails. I turn out loud at cfqr600.com. Comment below or send me a DM at Exclusivity Media or Trent Out Loud. All right. In our second lead story, we're going to talk about the man that actually lost his life at the rally. Corey um, Comperator. Sorry, I'm pronouncing the name wrong. My cousin's going to send me a text for that. Um, So Corey identified as a man who lost his life after shooting at Donald Trump's rally. So Corey was identified as the man who was killed during the assassination attempt of Donald Trump's life at a rally in Pennsylvania yesterday. According to PA Governor Josh Shapiro, uh, Corey lost his life while protecting his family from the gunfire. Okay, that's sad. He reportedly drove them. He deported, reportedly dove on them as a shield. The governor spoke with his wife, with the wife of the victim and his two daughters. After the conversation, the governor said that Corey was a girl dad. Corey was a firefighter and Corey was a firefighter. Corey went to church every Sunday. Corey loved his community. Most especially Corey loved his family. He described Corey as an avid supporter of former president, I, he doesn't say Trump, but the, the former president, I'm going to assume it was Trump because that's where he was, that was the rally he was at. And he said um, he, was, he supported the former president and he was so excited to be there um, the other night and support the community. The governor offered his prayers and to the two other individual individuals who are still in critical condition. Just note, this article was from, I think, Saturday. So... Maybe there's a report now when these people are out of critical condition, but just to give you the timeline of what I'm reading, this came out, I think, on, I think it was maybe yesterday. Um, anyways, not really too much to the story. Um, obviously, sad that there's an innocent bystander. This doesn't mean that it wasn't staged, because if you are going to stage something and you want it to look real, of course, you have somebody, you know, you risk um, somebody losing their life. So again, still on the fence, don't know. I really don't think that was a setup. But um, definitely um, RIP to Corey. All right. Um, also, what we're going to do just to close out this Donald Trump segment, we're going to read some, we're going to read you guys some tweets from Donald Trump and, uh, no, it's not Donald Trump, um, Joe Biden and um, Barack Obama. Biden said, um, I have been briefed on the shooting of Donald Trump at the rally in Pennsylvania. I'm grateful to hear that he is safe and doing well. My prayers for him and his family, for all those who are at the rally as we wait for the information. Jill and I are grateful to the Secret, for, se- Secret Service for getting him to safety. There's no place for this kind of violence in America. We must unite and um, must unite as one nation. 
And Barack Obama put out, he said, there's absolutely no place for political violence in our democracy. Although we don't know yet exactly what happened, we should all be relieved that former Trump, former President Trump wasn't seriously hurt and use this moment to reflect our, to use this moment to commit ourselves to the civility and respect of, of our politics. Michelle and I wish him a speedy recovery. So that was from um, Brock and uh, President Joe Biden. I was watching CNN and I just, I feel like a lot of people who are adamant Donald Trump supporters are being really cool. Even Van Jones was like, I am so happy nothing has happened to Donald Trump. I don't want to beat Donald Trump with him being assassinated or him, whatever, et cetera. It's like, let's beat him at the ballot box. So the, the um, Democrats are definitely being respectful. I haven't really heard too many people online, you know, doing the whole like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he missed. I did hear some people, like I said, I was at a party on, um, on Saturday and it was, uh, you know, some people were, um, you know, very vocal of, you know, how they feel about Trump, but, you know, um, obviously the people on TV, the commentators or whatever, they're going to be definitely polite. Um, there are, I think really much what's going on most is literally people arguing back and forth about if it was staged or if it was real. But like I said before, let me know what you guys think. Send me um, a DM or um, send me an email at trendoutloud at cfqr600.com. All right, this brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. Actress Sharon Doherty, better, best known for her roles on Beverly Hills 90210 and Charmed, has passed away at 53 years old. Okay, when I saw this, it was just pretty crazy. Um, according to people, Sharon Doherty was Shannon, Sh- Shannon Doherty has passed away at the age of 53 after years of fighting cancer. Oh, it's cancer. All right. Um, the beloved actress was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 2015 and in 2017, she announced that she was in remission, but the cancer sadly returned in 2019. In 2023, she made a heartbreaking announcement that the cancer had spread to her brain and she had, she had underwent surgery to remove a brain tumor. She was fighting and will, she was a fighter and will be remembered for her memorable roles as an actress in shows like Beverly Hills, 90210 and Charmed. So for those old school people, um, that, sorry to call y'all old school, but, it is um that remember that show beverly hills on 210 i wasn't really too into that show but i do remember it is a classical show out there this is kind of on the level of like the friends you know friends um but um i do know shannon so um shout out to her all right this brings us to our second quick story 50 cent reacts to amari hardwick saying the way he was told the story of power would end was not the actual way it ended. All right, y'all know when anybody is beefing with 50 Cent, 50 Cent is going to post them all over his Instagram. So um, all right, I'm going to play the clip, and then I'm going to read to you what 50 Cent uh, wrote. Here's a clip of um, Omari. I'm with you in the sense that the way the story was sold and told to me is not befitting of the way it ended, guys. All right, so after that came out, 50 wrote this on his Instagram. He said... This N-word is a strange bird. The F is he talking about? I've never done nothing but look out for him. If he needed something, I gave it to him. I understand now that that ish didn't even matter at all. So (laughs) power fans thinking that uh, Ghost is going to come back now that um, uh, I think it was Power Book 2 Ghost is coming to an end. But, but you all, you all know that 50 Cent is a master marketer. So the fact that this is coming up actually makes me think and believe that it could be possible that Ghost is going to come back. At the end of the day, 50 Cent is a businessman. He's about his money and he literally is building, um, a, uh, a studio in Shreveport, Louisiana. And if I know 50, he will find some way to get Amari Bach back in and they'll, you know, I don't, I first of all don't think Ghost is dead because we never even actually saw him die. But yeah, I think that there's gonna, there's gonna be a new series or it's gonna be a Power Book Five, like after Ghost or Ghost. Anyways, y'all let me know, but I'm telling you, I think that this is a little bit of 50 cent trolling us and thinking that he's not gonna bring, um, Omari 
uh, Ghost's character back to the Power Universe. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, this brings us to our third and final lead story. I swear every story today is about death. It's crazy. Um, fitness legend Richard Simmons sadly passed away at the age of 76 years old. Um, according to TMZ TV, the fitness icon Richard Simmons has passed away at the age of 57. Sorry, I already read that. Um, uh, his passing away today uh, comes one day after his birthday. The cause of death has not been revealed at the time, but no foul play has believed to have been involved. Rumi's, we are keeping his family in, in our prayers. So this is a little bit weird. I mean, this guy is literally like the fitness icon from like the 70s and 80s. Um, and even a little bit of early 90s. So what I think is that I, he has a lot of products and a lot of videos from like his aerobic workout and food or whatever. And I think that if he passed away from something like a heart attack or high blood pressure or something that has to do with him not having a good diet, I think it's probably going to ruin his brand. You know what I mean? You'd expect Mr. You know, fitness guru to live till he's like 90 or 100 years old. So him passing away at 76 is a little sus and the fact that they're not telling us the cause of death lets me believe that it's something to do with him not maybe following his own advice and let me know what you guys think send me a dm or an email trend out loud at cfqr600.com and uh let me know let me know. or let me know if y'all if anybody of you like internet guys out there if you know um his cause of death i would definitely like to find it out because you know it's going to be revealed at some point so if anybody has any info let me Okay, this brings us to question of the day. Um, if you could go back to any year in your life, what year would you go back to and why? All right, so Shorty Mac ATL wrote 2019. Okay, thanks for telling us why. That's important. That's a horrible <laughs> comment. Uh, Chef Bay underscore said, take me back to third grade so I could start saving for a house. That's hilarious. 19, uh, 1969. Uh, Alisar Tabatari wrote, take me back to 1988. I need to start from scratch. Hood Rich Pablo 358 said, any year my mother was alive. Oh, that's really sad. I actually just celebrated my mom's birthday. That's the party that was actually at my house. So, oh, you know what? Happy birthday, mom. I forgot to say that at the top of the show. I wanted to say it earlier and she always listens. So hopefully she at least listens to this part, but Happy birthday, mom. Love you. All right. Um, let me go back here. Hold on. Um, so, oh, chill slim underscore chill slim. Any year before COVID, it, we've been in assimilation since that. Okay. These comments are whack. Uh, Fu na underscore one said, don't act like you don't see this. I said, God will provide for you. 2016. I just want to. Okay. No. Somebody said, I don't want to go back nowhere. I just want to move forward the part uh, to the part where I get money. Okay, that's a pretty good comment. That's a good way of looking at it. Um, beautiful Full Morgan said, take me back to 1989, starting it all over. This time, I will stay in a child's place. Being adult is ghetto. That's what, of course, everyone is going to say. And it's so funny that every single person, when they're a kid, they can't wait to grow up. And as you grow up, you're like, oh, my gosh, why was I rushing this? And you want to go back, right? But I was hoping that we'd find, like, some funnier comments here. 2019, September the 8th, I would go straight to my, my baby brother's apartment, give him a big hug and cry and say, please. Okay, this is his Somebody passed away. I'm trying to find fun ones for you guys here. All right. Maria Dominique said, bring me back to 2001. That's when I finished high school. I would take my studies more seriously and actually go to college, college and get a degree. Somebody said, take me back to 2020 so I could do PPP. I was scared then, but I ain't scared now. That's funny. Uh, for those of you who are not in the U.S., that was uh, PPP loans. Uh, I, I think here in Canada, we had like Serb checks or something. All right. Love Steph said, um, any, bring me back to any year where bills and stress wasn't involved because I hate this. Somebody said, take me back to 2022. So the doctors can tell me it was a mistake that I have stage four cervical cancer. Jeez. Oh, these are depressing, man. Gosh. Somebody said 2000. So I could take high school more seriously and educate myself on higher education instead of hanging out and fighting, etc. I would also like ha to have some more time to be selective 
with my first child. Okay, these are horrible. Any year before 2021 because my mom passed away that year. Okay, I really thought this was really going to be fun, man. All right, let me try to find one more. Hold on, hold on. It's all school, school, school. All right, hold on. All right, let's let's take a guess at this one. Somebody said, I would probably more than likely go back to when I was seven years old before I was, oh my gosh. This guy is talking about somebody touching him at a young age. All right, we're going to go on to the second uh, question of the day. But before I will answer, if ever I had to go back, um, also just to clear, to be clear, I wouldn't want to go back because I wouldn't be where I am today. And I know that sounds corny. I know it's like, ah, oh, that's what everybody says, but I actually am very happy with my life. So I wouldn't want to go back and change anything and relive anything different because I wouldn't be where I am today. But to play fair and, um, you know, play the game over it, I would probably say I would like to go back to um, maybe like the beginning of high school or like mid high school, just because... It was that's like right before like the adulthood started, but you were old enough to like go around and do things and you weren't like, you know, when you're like eight, nine, ten, you can't do anything, but you're able to go on the bus by yourself, you were able to travel, you could go downtown, you could go shopping and do whatever you want. But it's not when you're like 18, 19, 20, where you have to be like, okay, I'm an adult. I have to start taking university school. What am I gonna do in life? So I think that sweet spot of like 14, 15, 16. 17 before you actually have to pay any bills or have any responsibility is probably the sweetest time. Probably not the funnest time. The funnest time are in your 20s um, because that's when you can wild out, do really do whatever you want. But that little point when it changes, I think is really fun. So that's when I would want you to, that's the year I'd want to go back. All right, this brings us to our second question of the day. Hopefully it's better than the first one. What's the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? All right, so pretty underscore... Queet said, um, sign up for ballet classes at age 40. It's never too late. All right, that's a good one. I like the uh, being inspiring. The next person said, uh, Sleepy Beauty said, uh, saw a snowstorm was coming, so I booked a flight to Jamaica the night before. Rum Punch and Patty Beef. Please, that was really good. Then the um, second uh, comment Sorry, I just got a text message and got a little sidetracked. Sorry. Um, walking, in, uh, walking underscore in favor said, um, an old lady asked me for $20 and I gave her $500 instead. She cried and was broken hearted. Uh, all right. The next person said, um, booked a solo trip to another country out of the blue because it was cold. I've never done that. Can you imagine being like, yo, it's going to snow tomorrow. Let me bounce out of here. That's, but that's actually really good, though. It's kind of inspiring. I might do that one day. Another person here, too, uh, Teresa Selvi said, book a one-way ticket to a random destination at 3 a.m. Okay, th this is, is this like a thing here that I didn't know about? Um, MS Mocha said, pay it forward and bought groceries for a family who was standing in line before me. Okay, I don't get that. You have a whole random family. You don't know how rich they are, but you're just like, going to pay their groceries. It's crazy to me. Um, Keep coming back. 48 said, buy perfume without knowing how it smells. That's funny. Somebody else said, I got to work on time. It's good. All right. Let me get a couple more. Somebody said, starting a business. That's good. Joining the military at 36. Booking a solo trip. And uh, that's pretty much it. Move to California. No job with $3,000. Okay. That's really good. Um let me know what your guys' answer is to this. What is the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? Send me your, send me an email, trend out loud at cfqr600.com, or you could send me a, a DM. Sorry, guys, I'm actually really moving a little slow today. S send me an email, trend out loud at cfqr600.com. Send me a, a DM at trend out loud or to city media, or comment below this email, <laughs> this video. This brings us to sports news. Bronny James scores eight points during the NBA Summer League debut. NBA fans are ready to see if Bronny James could tear up the court during the Las Vegas NBA Summer League um, game. During Bronny's debut, this is, 
How was this his debut? He already played a, a game or two. Anyways, uh, during Bronny's debut, he scored eight points with four rebounds and two assists in the Los Angeles Lakers 99-80 to loss uh, to the Houston Rockets. According to uh, Yahoo Sports, the rookie guard played 20 minutes, shooting two points in the second half. Bronny scored three of seven from the floor. Yikes. And went 0 for 6 from three-pointer. Lod. That is not good at all, Bronny. Um, so we all know, well, listen, there's no sports going on right now, so everything is slow when it comes to sports media. But we all know that anything that Bronny does at this point, it's literally going to be scrutinized. It's going to be analyzed. Um, you already know my thoughts on the whole situation. And, but I mean, I would just give the kid a break. You know what I mean? We don't have to have a report of everything. This is what he did today. This is what he woke up and ate. This is what he wore. This is what, you know, this, his shoe was untied. It's like every single movement that this guy does, we, it has to be on ESPN somewhere. Um, but Hey, look, I'm talking about it on my podcast and people are commenting about it. Right. Um, I do think the over for three is a little concerning. Why are you taking so much, um, shots? You know what I mean? The three for, um, the three for 12. You know, that great, but we all know that Bronny is not going to be a great player. So I just don't understand why this is so surprising. And y'all expect him to shoot 20 or 30 points a game. Like it's just not going to happen. That's not who he is. All right. That is the show. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm going to go home and get some rest and rest my voice up. Before I go, just want to remind you guys, if you're used to watching this show on YouTube or listening to it on podcast platforms, please try to check me out every Monday to Friday from 11 to 12 on CFQR600.com. We do play the Turn Out Loud podcast, but we mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip-hop and R&B. It's a good way to break up your day and listen to the podcast and get some entertainment news while you listen to your favorite 90s and 2000s tracks. Vice versa, if you're used to listening to this podcast on CFQR 600 and you can't always catch the show from 11 to 12, I understand you're busy, you got Zoom meetings, you got things that you need to do. All You can always check out every show, never miss a show. Just go to YouTube or podcast platforms. Just go to your desired site. Type in Trend Out Loud, the show will pop up. Just hit that follow button and the subscribe button so you can be notified every time we upload a new show. And also, lastly, for those of you who like to watch uh, with video, Spotify now supports video, so you don't only have to watch video on YouTube. And it's actually a better viewing experience because you can close the app and the audio keeps going. So those are all the ways that you could keep up with the show. As always, you know, you can follow me on any of my social handles at Trend Out Trend Out Loud or Exclusive City Media. Thanks for kicking with me. I'll see y'all tomorrow, man. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Trend Out Loud. Peace.